Hi everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to be working the solutions to your quiz on October 22nd, um, which is going to be a little bit about differentiability, which I think we talked about on, on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. But anyways, uh, we'll talk about it again here. So think about this function. This function where the function is equal to uh, 3 minus the absolute value of x minus 1. And so this is what this function looks like when you graph it on Desmos. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can get a feel for the whole function. And uh, it appears like, you know, a straight line and then it hits this kink and then it has another straight line down. And let's look at our questions. We're, we're, what are we given? We're given the definition of a right-sided derivative and a left-sided derivative. So we have these formulas ready to use if we need them. And <clears throat> we're supposed to answer the following questions. Number one says, does the following left-sided limit exist? And so we're looking at the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left side. So let's try to look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. And starting from, here's, well, here's x is equal to 1. And so starting from the left side, I'm going to take steps towards my limit point at x equals 1. And I see that my function appears to be approaching a value for y of y is equal to 3. So I think my left-sided limit is 3, and I can answer number 1. Yes, and it is 3. Okay, number 2, does the following right-sided limit exist? If so, what is it? In this case, we're looking for the limit as x approaches positive 1 from the right side. So again, starting from the right side, if I take my right side of the limit, I have to take steps toward my limit point, x is equal to 1, and it appears that the value of my function is again approaching y is equal to 3. So the right side of the limit does exist, and it's equal to 3. So then does the following two-sided limit exist? If so, what is it? And so um, here I'm talking about the two-sided limit as x approaches 1. And I already found the left and right sided limits, and they were both 3. So yes, I do have a two sided limit, and it's 3. Number 4. Write the interval of continuity of the function using interval notation. If there are any discontinuities, specify what types of discontinuities are present. Okay. Now, what does continuity mean? Well, continuity, well, we say a function is continuous at any point. Let's choose a random point, like x is equal to 5. If we say this function is continuous at a point, if the left-sided limit exists, the right-sided limit exists, those two limits are equal to each other, so the two-sided limit exists, and the two-sided limit is equal to the function evaluated at that point. And so <clears throat> another sort of informal definition of continuity is that you could draw your function with your marker and never have to pick up your pen as you're drawing the function. And so you could ask yourself this, you could ask yourself, as I'm drawing this function um, or tracing it, do I ever have to pick up my pen? And the answer is no, and it seems like if there's any point that's kind of in question about maybe being discontinuous, it might be x is equal to 1. And so the question is, does the two-sided limit exist? Yeah, we talked about how the two-sided limit was 3. And is it that equal to the function evaluated at 3? And we could always look back at our functional form and plug in x is equal to 1. So we have the absolute value of 1 minus 1. So we have 3 minus 0, and that is 3. So my function evaluated at 3 is equal to my two-sided limit. Sorry, excuse me. My function evaluated at x equals 1 is 3, and that's equal to my two-sided limit at x equals 1, which is also 3. So in any case, um, this function appears to be continuous for all... Uh, real numbers, including x is equal to 1. So my interval of continuity is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And um, I would say that there are no discontinuities. That, you know, it appears there are no discontinuities. Okay. Now number 5 asks, does the left-sided derivative exist at x is equal to 1? And um, I gave you the, the formula for a left-sided derivative, so you could you know, plug in your, your, your formula for your function and, and try to evaluate your left-sided derivative. Or you could remember the geometric interpretation of the derivative, which is to say, start, um, 
at your derivative point and place one point, and then go out to the left, because we're trying to find a left-sided derivative, and put another point somewhere on your curve, and you can draw a secant line that passes through both of these points. So a line that passes through two points on a curve is called a secant line. So my, my line in teal is secant uh, to my function. And um, I'm not a great artist, but pretend that's a straight line. And then, uh, you know, we used, to draw this line, we used a point here, the derivative I'm trying to evaluate, and some point out to the left. And then we want to find the limit as this interval uh, shrinks. This interval between the point I initially chose and my derivative point at x equals 1 is shrinking. And so let me choose points closer and closer. And if I draw the secant line through each of these points, it actually, well, the secant line of each of these points is the same as the first secant line that I drew. So, and so <clears throat> we say that the slope of the secant line as the interval between the two secant points collapses around the derivative point, the slope of this line must be the left-sided derivative. So the slope, which I'll use m to talk about the slope, is the left-sided derivative. And then now let's think about the right-sided derivative, because that's the next question, is about the right-sided derivative. So same kind of idea. Look at your derivative point, and then choose some point out to the right for our right-sided derivative. Um, so we'll have this sort of interval that we want to close. And also I'm going to sort of try to draw a secant line that passes through both of these points, which would be a lot better if I had, you know, if I had the skills of an artist. And so I've drawn my secant line. I'll use a different color to mark my, my derivative point and the other point I chose. And then I'm going to try to make this interval shorter and shorter by choosing points that are closer and closer to my derivative point. And at each point, I'm going to, you know, draw my secant line again. So like, let's choose these two and just try to draw the secant line again. But it turns out it's the same secant line as the initial one I drew, which has this negative slope, clearly a negative slope. And so for this sort of uh, maroonish, yellowish secant line, um, it appears to stay the same in the limit as this interval gets closer and closer. And so in this case, the slope of this secant line is my right-sided derivative, where the slope of the secant line as the interval between the two points that I used to draw the secant line, um, as that length of that interval approaches zero, uh, the slope of that secant line and the limit will be my right-sided derivative. Okay, but this slope of my right-sided derivative is clearly negative something. Um, and then over here, for my left-sided derivative, this is clearly a positive slope on this secant line. And so um, I think that there's, you know, obviously a left-sided derivative uh, and a right-sided derivative, but the two-sided derivative um, only exists if your left side equals your right side, and so I would say that no, the two-sided derivative does not exist. And so what is the question of differentiability? Well, a function is differentiable at a point if the two-sided derivative exists. And if we want to write the interval of differentiability, I can um, sort of eyeball it and see that uh, for any other point to the left or to the right of x is equal to 1, the function appears to be differentiable. But at x is equal to positive 1, we have a point where we don't have a two-sided derivative. So the function isn't differentiable at x is equal to positive 1. And so as I'm writing my interval of differentiability, I'm going to write negative infinity comma up to 1 union with 1 up to positive infinity. And this just tells you that, you know, your function is differentiable everywhere except for 1. So I use round parentheses to show that 1 is excluded. Okay, I sort of glazed over this, but just a little bit of um, housekeeping, or <laughs> not housekeeping, but just... I guess, cleaning up the last little bit of work we have to do. Um, what is the left-sided derivative at x is equal to 1? Well, I said it's the slope of the secant line as in the limit, and this in the limit this doesn't really appear to change, and it looks like the slope of this line is positive 1. And then over here, for my right-sided derivative, it looks like the slope of this secant line is negative 1, and that doesn't seem to change in the limit. So um, for left side, I have positive 1. For right side, I have negative 1. Again, left side, I have negative 1. And right side, I have, wait, 
I think I got that mixed around. Right side should be negative one, left side should be positive one. Yes, okay, so this is how you would complete your quiz um, tomorrow.